Hello everybody. Today I'm looking at a build. This is going to be a full-on analysis, a build analysis of the Fencer. The, the, what, what prompted me to make this video is fellow Battle Brothers YouTuber Pogo Reborn did a build guide on his Fencer. I think he posted it about like three days ago. I'm in contact with him, so he told me he was working on it. He said, you know, Carve, check out the Fencer. And I'm like, alright, I'll check out the Fencer, so I have. And then he uh, also recently posted beating the fencer, or beating the fencer, beating the mad barbarian with the fencer. So it's really got me thinking, like, how viable is this fencer in, for Battle Brothers? Like, is this really a good build? So I have a few questions I want to answer with, uh, with this analysis. This is going to be pretty in-depth. This video is going to consist of me going over the build right here and the stats and how I built them. Then there's going to be various clips. I think I have like 25 total clips of like a minute or so or less of um, going through different fights I had. There's a goblin fight. There's a noble fight, brigands, the barbarians, and just testing out like what makes this build work? Is it really good? What does it work well against? What doesn't it work well against? What am I annoyed by? And then at the end, I'm going to come to the, I'm going to, do a concluding part where we're gonna answer we're gonna really put an answer to those questions the questions that I want to ask right now are one is this build fun that's cool question two is is this build uh, a novelty build or th and or is it like actually something you would want to like you should build this and something you need to have on your roster and three I'm gonna say is it uh, really good at specific rules? Does it fill a niche that you need? Does it kill specific enemies? I'm thinking, you know, you use footwork and you use the lunge ability. Can you get those backline enemies? Can you get the, like, the necromancers? Or can you get, um, like, some, some archers, like an arbalister? Can you get, like, some priority goblin units? There's, like, stuff like that. Is it really good at that? Or is that just kind of talk? Those are the three questions I want to I want to answer. But right now, we are just going to look at the build. So the Fencer is a nimble frontline build. He takes uh, Student, takes Colossus because he's nimble, takes Dodge because this is an initiative build, the Fencing Sword if you're unaware. It has the regular Slash ability, but then it also has the Lunge ability, which is kind of like you, have, you take Footwork and put it into an attack. So, you can run, you basically footwork into people's zone of control and hit them. And you do more damage and ignore more armor um, relative to your initiative level. So you want really high initiative. You want a max initiative. So, you want dodge. Dodge means you must take relentless. Um, you obviously want sword mastery because you need to, this is a very, very, very stamina intensive build. Um, you want nimble because you need the light armor for the stam and for the initiative. You want berserk. You absolutely want berserk for this build. There is no way you don't want berserk. You want killing frenzy. This build is a little bit weak on damage, but killing frenzy can help that. Uh, and then duelist. You absolutely need duelist as well. And then I take footwork as my final perk. Um, would I go without footwork? I don't know. Would I, would I take um, Overwhelm? No, I don't think I would take Overwhelm. Some other things. Uh, in Pugo's video, what does he talk about? He took he took Gift. He did not take Berserk and Recover. I think you need Berserk and Recover. Berserk, the, the amount of AP that you get from this build, like, sometimes to lunge, you need to st start away from an enemy. So, if you don't... So, you lunge into them, and then if you don't have Berserk, and if you don't kill them, um... You don't get any more AP, so your whole turn is just walking forward one and, and attacking, and that's really lame. So you want, you definitely need Berserk. Berserk means you do need Recover. This is such a stam-intensive build, you need Recover. Um, he, I believe he took Overwhelm. I don't really like Overwhelm, because I think this build shines best against enemies that he can just, like, cut down. And when he cuts them down, they're not even alive for Overwhelm, so it doesn't matter. You don't bring this guy against people that are going to live for a long time. So you don't need Overwhelm. You, know, you don't bring him in front of an Orc Warlord. Because he's not going to kill the Orc Warlord. He, you're not sitting this dude in front of an Orc Warlord. 
And the Orc Ward will last long enough to where Overwhelm actually matters. So that's true. You could take Bone Wolf. That is very true. You you really well could take Bone Wolf. But again, I don't I don't play and he I guess he's been far enough away from people to where Lone Wolf has been helpful, but it's not damage. If it gave him more damage, that'd be something, but I don't think he really needs the defense. The defense he gets from Dodge is really, really strong. He gets, um, at minimum, I want to say 15 melee defense and ranged defense from Dodge when he's totally stammed out, which gets him to up to 54. And when he's maxed, I believe it's like 20 Dodge, so it gets him up to 59. So that's really, really good. Now for equipment, you want nimble. You want as light nimble as you can get. You, I got, I got seven, eight. You totally, you could even go, um, Salad Helmet. But I just I I would rather take the uh, the 40 extra head armor and the um, just for the two stamp I think that's good. You could go with like a light helmet like this. That totally works as well. I mean you you could like totally lighten this guy up, get up to 132 uh, initiative right. Oh no, well he would be a plus 15 because it, this doesn't have the hyena attachment, so it'd be 147 initiative, which is a little bit higher than what I have right now. But like I was saying. Uh, you want the hyena the hyena attachment because you plus 15 initiative that is huge that is, is essential to this build you obviously are using a fencing sword uh pogo in his video talked about using he has quick hands and then what he would want to do is he wanted to a um quick hands into a dagger but he didn't take any he was thinking dagger spec and i i could see that working um i don't you would have you would I don't know what you would do. You'd, you'd drop footwork. You'd probably drop killing frenzy, and then you would take dagger spec and quick hands. I don't think that's worth it. But like, I I could see where the three AP. I've had moments where three AP is left, so that is like, all right. Then, um, he also thought about a noble sword. You know, you just th like this this attack here, the slash attack is pretty shit. So you just switch to a noble sword, and then you can do more damage that way. Um cool at all but if you're slashing a lot with this build i don't think you're doing it right or the build itself has something wrong with it because this build should be dancing it should be dancing around and using the lunge ability so you shouldn't have to you should slash when you when you kill recover when you kill proc berserk and recover that's when you slash or when you need to finish somebody off you lunge don't kill them you uh slash then you proc berserk get four more ip and then you lunge again with killing that's when you would slash, and you don't really need quick hands for a fucking noble sword for that, because you can't switch back and use the fencing sword again. So stick with your fencing sword. It's a really simple build. I mean, you could throw a fucking dagger here if you want to. I wouldn't. I don't think it really matters. This is a I, this is not an early game build. The fencing sword is a weapon you have to buy or you have to find. I don't even think you, you could maybe find it on a like a sword master, but I think you have to buy this, which means it's a late game build because you're not buying fencing swords. When you could be buying armor, you could be buying like raid axes, you could be buying the other legendary weapons that are more conventional. So it, when you're late game, um, you don't need to be farming armor. So I wouldn't take anything else. I think this is just the way to go. I want to say, I won't really be doing much more of an analysis now because I'll do so much more in the clips. But remember, the three questions we're going into is: Is this build fun? Is it a, just a novelty, or is it something that you could really bring to your team? And then, is it really good at killing these backline enemies, these priority targets, or is that just kind of a myth? Let's go into the clips right now. Alright, so I'm moving my entire team up. Even though I'm going to let these guys get the uh, the extra attacks, like these fucking crossbows. By moving up, I'm giving my fencer more support so they don't all just hit the fencer. Because the fencer... Uh, these guys didn't pass their turns. The fencer had to pass his turn because he just acts so quickly. So everyone would just shoot the fencer, and then odds are he'd get you know he'd get hit, or he'd at least just get a bunch of stam on him because of having to dodge all the attacks. So this looks like the perfect opportunity. I'm hoping we're able to kill this brigand right here. We've softened him up with the crossbow so the fencing sword can get that clean kill right there. That's what we're looking for. So we have uh, 97 aim. I'm hoping we're able to kill this guy. Perfect. All right, let's get that. And we we ended up missing this dude. But let's say we killed this guy right here. This would be super, super strong. We could have just gotten three kills in a row. And we're in the enemy lines. We're almost fatigued out. And we still get 16 melee defense from dodge. We're still putting us at above 50. So that's awesome. Fucking great. 
Alright, let's just see how the uh, sword here does. Almost. We Alright. We almost one-shot the brigand, which is not terrible. I think that's probably comparable to uh, a regular duelist like this. So we're basically, we're almost entirely stammed out. What I want to do now is I want to take a look. Alright, so we're getting uh, 0 to 51 can ignore here. 0 to 65 can ignore on lunge with my, I, I want to say this is using my current uh, fatigue. I believe it does, because when I'm maxed out, I get about like 0 to 71. My initiative is still so freaking high that, uh... I'm able to do this. All right, let's uh, let's so let's look at this. All right, zero to sixty-five can ignore armor, seventy-one to one hundred three. Now let's take a look at uh, this is like a max roll orc cleaver, I'm doing sixty-five to one thirteen. All right, sixty-five one thirteen, seventy-one one hundred three. So better min damage, not as good max damage. Then we have zero to sixty-six can ignore armor with a thirty-four percent ignore armor on duelist. Same thing right here with 34%, actually. You're getting 0 to 65, and this is at minimum. But he's already fatigued out, so no more fencing. So the worst, this, the ignore armor here, like the near the worst, is as good as this fucking orc cleaver. Um, zero, 71 to 125 for armor right here. This is pretty terrible. It's 53 to 77. The armor, um, the armor damage here is really bad. But the armor ignore is what you do this for. So. You're getting really, really solid damage. Even here, 0 to 51, like the actual armor damage again is terrible, but you're getting pretty good actual ignore armor damage. I want to also note that there is no, uh, there's no bleed. Obviously a cleaver inflicts bleed and this thing doesn't, but we're seeing that a fencing sword is actually quite comparable to a regular uh, duelist weapon. Now, it's definitely worth noting that while at max fatigue right here, let's take a look through 64, so it is scaling currently. Um, the, he doesn't have underdog. So while he has 53 melee defense, because he's getting 15 from dodge, at bare minimum, 15 from dodge, um, he doesn't have underdog. So getting in a position like this is actually quite weak. This, this dude here, this duelist with, I think, I want to say 40, he's got 40, but he has underdog, would actually be better suited to be in here. So getting surrounded like this is quite terrible. Normally, what I would love to do with the fencer is I would bring him around the side over here. He's not going to get surrounded. But for the sake of this demonstration, I just wanted to. I, this was the the way in with the way the, the freaking terrain with the palisades work. So I threw him right in the middle, and he was able to do really good work. And he's he's okay right now. He's going to have to recover next turn, but he is getting the shit kicked out of him. So he's probably going to need to rotate very soon. And for my final demonstration, let's kick the shit out of Urban Goodman. All right, we're probably going to hit his body. So his body armor's untouched. Went down to about half. Pretty good. That would I mean that would have killed he has nine lives, so it doesn't kill him. But in two hits, uh, you know, we kind of we did like really rip the shit out of his armor. So that's really good. Uh, so overall, this was actually like a really solid build. We're gonna win this in about a turn, and then we're gonna look at the full spell stats and see how we did. All right, taking a quick look at this, we got 603 damage, which is pretty comparable to um, Axe did more, uh, Cleaver did more. That's it. That's actually really good. Three kills is. Again, seconds. Who's top three on the team? This is a fencer. So, like, <laughs> that's good. You wouldn't expect the fencer to be doing this. So, in these brigand fights, and uh, the same thing with nomads, uh, it's actually really, really high quality. Human enemies with the, the good ignore armor um, and the morale breaking as well is key to this. It's really good in these human fights. Alright, so, game plan. We're gonna fucking merc this dude. Then we're gonna miss him. And then, uh, do you want to get on to... Hmm. We were supposed to kill, we were supposed to kill the, the Overseer here. That's a, little, that's a little sad. So, we could A, kill the Ambusher. B, actually, no, fuck the Ambusher. Fuck that guy. Alright, we're gonna kill... <laughs> I don't really give a shit. We're gonna kill that guy. Alright, C, we could have killed the Overseer, assuming we hit. What did we, what did we miss on the Overseer? Well, 92. Ah, that's, that sucks. But... So, what I want to talk about here is what you can do is you can kill priority backline units. The issue is, what fucking priority backline units are there? I actually managed to kill the, um, the shaman because he ran up like a moron, so I just bolted him with crossbows. You could have killed the overseer, so we'll give him a point. We'll say he killed the overseer. So, the overseer, the shaman, um, necromancers could work. There's no way you're getting to an ancient priest. 
I guess the ancient priest could count, but like, good luck getting that. Good luck getting to a necromancer while you're at it. But like, we'll just say those exist. Um, you get to priority backline units like this ambusher. I don't really give a shit about killing this one ambusher. That means nothing to me. Killing this ambusher. Killing that ambusher means nothing. That ambusher means nothing. These are like chaff. They're trash mobs. Killing a mar a brigand marksman. Trash mob. Um, like. These aren't, the, like, that's the thing of the fencer. It's, oh my god, you can weave through the enemy and kill these units. But, like, this 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 one ambusher, the odds that this one ambusher was going to do something, like, this round, that I just amazingly stopped. Like, this ambusher w was, or low, like, this ambusher wasn't going to change the course of the battle, odds are. Like, may maybe he poisoned someone and then we would have lost people. Like, who knows? But odds are, no. So, odds are, the fencer really isn't actually getting a lot of priority kills he would have let's say we can give him the overseer and maybe we can say noble arbalisters and but like what the hell is he gonna do in a in a bar in a barbarian fight go kill the fucking drummers like no when in the history of the world do you guys even kill drummers they just run away they're fucking useless the the beast master maybe i guess you could maybe kill the beast master but i no way in shit am i sending this dude behind a line of chosen he's gonna die they're just gonna run after him so like while this is this is a really cool maneuver being able to like dance and dance and dance you're not actually like at the end of the day i could have not done this and i could have just i would have i'm gonna kill the shaman this turn regardless oh i won't kill this one ambusher i don't give a fuck this guy would just crossbow the hell out of this skirmisher and nothing's really changed and if anything i've just brought another crossbow dude or another, you know, like another two-hander or a polearm guy who can just do the same work anyway. It might take him an extra turn. But the fencer is a luxury build. It's not really, um, I'm like an, a game changer, you know? It's not changing the course of these fights. It's just like a novelty way to kill some backline units that really isn't that useful at the end of the day. All right, so what I want to look at right here is this is a noble fight. So what I was able to do is I saw the uh, the fencer spawned like here or something, and the mammoth spawned here. So the mammoth moved, rotated him. So I'm gonna try and see if maybe we can actually get those backline kills. But let's all right. Let's first things first. We did use we used rotate. We we used rotate. We did not. We was not able to do this on his own. All right. What I want to do is I want to. That is too bad that I I went here instead of there. If I was able to there, I could have been lunged to here so we weren't able to kill the arbalister because i don't think you can control where the uh the fucking zone of control takes you which is too bad i guess you could have walked up to like here maybe and done something with that we'll have to see now but now look it's kind of in the back i guess we'll, uh, we'll give updates on how this goes all right here we go 84% hit, a full HP footman. Okay. Pretty fucking good. Not gonna lie. Well, well, that was pretty, pretty fucking baller. Alright, next up is gonna be the, uh, the knight, I guess. Alright, so... Let's try some shit here. We could f footwork... You wanna footwork, like into the fucking necromancer all right cool i right, cool i guess this is what we're doing remember we're we're out of dodge we don't have underdog we're gonna get stunned so we're gonna pass our turn so if we get stunned we're just gonna keep it um we're gonna, we're not gonna get stunned for next round problem is there's no way we don't get maxed out on fatigue and it takes 19 fatigue if we had like iron lungs and one we'd be fine and we'd be able to lunge and kill the necromancer but we can't. That's the thing. So we're. Ugh. I guess if I had if I had more stam, I probably. I guess I could have had more stam. I'm assuming I'm gonna get maxed out on stam from being swung at. If I don't get maxed out on stam, on stam from by being swung at, then I'm fine. So let's just see how that goes. All right. So I want to note two things. One, a guy with a hooked blade just moved me forward into him so he can die more. So great job to him. But two, now we're breaking. And now we are surrounded entirely. So, okay. This is probably my bet. This is probably me playing like a moron. But, Necromancer. 
Same thing with zombie fights. Like, this is what the, um... This, like, this is what you would do for a necromancer, right? Is you would, like, go into them. So, remember how I've said previously, or may maybe I'll say this later depending on how I organize these clips, is good luck getting to a necromancer? Yeah, this is why. This is why good luck getting to a necromancer, because you just get surrounded by zombies. And good thing these are brigands. I don't think brigands have backstabber. I know zombies have backstabber. Like... He's probably fucked, and if these were ancient undead with fearsome, he'd be breaking, and he'd get the shit kicked out of him. So now we have to go on a rescue mission for this guy, and we still haven't killed the Necromancer. Now, I guess what you could have done is you could have run all the way around, and the, so what you could do, the, like, the, the Fetzer could have run up, could have run around, then he could have run over here, and he could have stabbed the Necromancer. Well, it just so happens that I have created a build where you do that with a crossbow, so you just run around here, and then you can stop because you have a ranged weapon, and then shoot the necromancer. You don't need to run onto him. So this build is objectively worse, especially because it doesn't have Pathfinder. If you have Pathfinder, maybe it's okay. But it's objectively worse than the necrofucker build, where you run around and shoot him with a crossbow because it just takes longer, and then you're engaged in melee. So this for this build to work on a necromancer, it has to just run in and do it. Because otherwise, you would just use the Necrofucker build. And since this doesn't work, then it's not viable to say, oh, you can just go kill a Necromancer. I, like, the thing is, he's so quick that you can't wait for the Brigands to act. You can't just be like, oh, I'll let them run forward. Like, with the Necrofucker, the, he can just pass his turn, and the zombies will run in front, and then you can go around. But this guy is so damn quick, he acts before the Brigands, so he either misses a turn... Because, and then lets him run forward. Or he has to, like, somehow just get surrounded by them. Because he has to act, he ends his turn here, then he runs in, and then they act, and then he passes, and then they act again. So he's screwed. It's just, like, it's not that viable. Alright, taking a quick look at this. Um, he did pretty bad. I guess. I mean, he did, Hybrid did better, he did better, he did better. He got stunned for a round. Like, he did, like, he did okay, I guess. He didn't, but his job... Of killing the necromancer didn't happen which I guess is the problem if you're like we saw earlier how you were able to just kill um brigands so using him normally still works fine he still kicked the shit out of the brigands so don't get me wrong I'm not saying he's a bad brigand killer I'm saying he's bad at killing necromancers and which is indicative of there's like four or five actual enemies you would want to use the idea of bouncing and dancing through the enemy lines to kill like, that, it's the Necromancer, it's the, I guess, Arvalisters, if we're counting those, the Overseer, the Goblin Overseer, and Shaman, and, like, the Priest. That's, like, Engineers? Southern Engineers, maybe? I guess? Like, there's, like a, ha like, a handful, and he can't do the Necromancer, and if he could, he'd just do it worse than the Necrofucker build. So, it's, like kind of cool again we're seeing it's just a luxury build and it's not really that practical for anything other than just a fancy damage dealer all right i mean i guess we could try that again but like now what the fuck did he do just like stab him again like i hope a fucking unhold doesn't get on him <laughs> like i don't really see the uh the cool part of this build right here like, it's doing good damage. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. It's, like, that is two hits with a fucking fencing sword onto a Chosen, and it, like, half kills him and gives him an injury. I'm, I am, like, content. I'm content with that. What I'm not content with is, like, why do I want that? Why would I want a build that is now completely out of Stam in the second turn? Like, he would have probably killed the Chosen... If um, you didn't miss the first one, but nevertheless, like <laughs> there's only um, there's just not a lot of utility here. He's just a he's a novelty damage dealer. That is what the the conclusion I keep reaching is he's a novelty damage dealer that does a decent enough job. It's just like I need more than that on my team. So, um, again, I'm kind of unimpressed. All right, everyone, I have recorded this. I've done all the, the clips and everything. I've played a lot. And I want to talk about 
I want to answer those questions really. So question one, is this build fun? Yes, very fun. It's very fun to just like destroy brigands and destroy like shitty noble units and destroy goblins. I love this build for that reason. For f like for the fun aspect, totally worth it. But for me, the when I when I say is this build fun, I mean like, is it like quirky fun? Haha. -ha. I personally have a lot of fun by destroying and winning the hardest fights in the game. Like 52 nobles. That was a video I did recently. That was fun to me. You can't, but like, no way in hell would I ever bring a fencer to that build, to that fight. Sorry, no, never. I would, I would rather go with 11. I mean, I guess I would rather bring the fencer than not bring anyone. But like, <laughs> that's a tough one right there because the fencer would probably just die. This is re like the hard fights, legendary locations. I don't think I'm bringing a fencer. Or if I am, it's to like, it's because it's hard, because it's not very good. I'm like, Mad Barbarian, props to Puggo for beating the Mad Barbarian with the Fencer. But the reason that's a cool video is because the Fencer isn't very good. It's worse than everything else you could do, which is why that's like, wow, he did it with a Fencer. If the Fencer was like a, like a real, real conventional, strong build, no one would bat an eye. Because that's just like, oh yeah, a fencer, cool. Like if you did it with a duelist, everyone would be like, yeah, did it with a duelist. But with a fencer, you're like, oh, the fencer, isn't, doesn't that suck? Yeah, kinda. Question number two, is this a novelty build or is this something that you could really take into any company and use in any uh, any sort of fight? Uh, I've been saying it all video, really. No, I can't take this into any fight and have it be really good. Um, it is a, it's a novelty build, it's a luxury build. It's fun and it can work in some fights, and it won't work in other fights. Um, part of that problem, I think, is nimble. You, like, going into long, drawn-out fights with 160 helmet and 211 armor, you're you're gonna, you're gonna run out of armor. And you can't actually afford to level HP, because you need to level, you actively need to be leveling initiative. You you need to level melee attack. I guess you could drop melee, skill, melee defense. I, I wouldn't. But, like, you need to level initiative as much as you can. So, taking shit, like, you can't, like, 75, I didn't level. He had 60, he max rolled HP, got 60, I took Colossus and was done with it. I don't want to give this guy a shit ton of HP because he needs all the initiative he can get. So, novelty build, yeah, like, he's good against Brigand. He's, like, actively, just, like, straight up good against Brigands. He is good against, like, nobles. Um... He's good against killing them if he can hit them. It's once you're in a line fight, he's not going to be able to lunge, or he's going to have to footwork and lunge a lot, and that's a lot of stam. But he's like he's good at killing goblins. He was really good at killing um, those chosen. He was surprisingly good at killing the chosen. It's just like that. It was just really like you saw me. I was I get maybe like you know he f goes in, footworks back out, or he just like goes in and then just starts slashing. We've already talked about how slash is a shitty attack. So. And, and I didn't take him into orcs because he's not going to be good against orcs. He's going to be bad against orcs. He's surprisingly decent against ancient undead, but again, ancient undead is a line fight, just similar to nobles. And there's no arbalisters in ancient undead fights that you can go around and kill. You just sit there and start smacking. Like you, do, there's better things to kill ancient undead. There's better things to kill orcs. There's better things to kill uh, barbarian chosen. There's be definitely better things to kill fucking unholds too. Like that end of that fight, you didn't see it, but it was just like he's just like sitting there, like stabbing an unhold, a, a frost unhold with armor with a fencing sword. It's like it's just like wow, I'm useless. So this is a this is a pure novelty build. There is it is good. It is not a bad build, but it's just not something that you need. If I'm taking, if I can only have twelve dudes in my roster, I'm not building a fencer. Maybe with like the viper. Um, the gladiator you could maybe make a fencer out of him i think or or uh the one or the lion whatever one has the initiative stars you could probably make a fencer out of him but like that's because he's built that way you don't you don't just take someone else and make them a fencer you, and even still it's just like and there's probably better builds you could be making with the viper than this this fucking fencing sword so question three is is it good at killing those backline priority units priority units so you know he, he can be a novelty build all he wants but like in a way the necro fucker is a novelty build that's kind of a fun build it's fun you run around in the map and you shoot him and then you do nothing because you're on the other side of the map and you have to run back the necro when the necro fucker does his job like running around a forest 
he doesn't do a lot of damage because he just shoots a necromancer maybe kills a geist or two and that's it but the neck but that is like that's really good and the necrofucker works in other stuff like that is he is effective we saw this in um the necromancer clip is that this guy he is not as good as the crossbow as the necrofucker build for running around because uh because it takes longer than shooting him from like six tiles away so you have for this build work you have to run in otherwise you would just use the necrofucker build and it was bad at running in. He got surrounded. He, we won. He didn't die largely because of terrible brigand morale. So there's that. We saw he would have killed the goblin overseer. So fair. But that was weird. I don't know why they ran up. Sometimes they don't do that. Sometimes you won't be able to do that. I fought other goblin fights. And he, was, you know, he wasn't killing overseers in like two turns. Um, I, you, there was another goblin fight and you, and you saw that. So... Uh, ancient priests. I again. I, I guess he could similar to the necromancer. I think he's just gonna get surrounded and die. Especially with fearsome, he's just gonna die. He doesn't have underdog. And the ancient, and the, uh, the ancient undead are just gonna surround him in a shield wall, and he's fucked because he's not gonna get out. He's going to die. He's gonna get miasma or something. He's screwed. Uh, what else could there even be? Arbalisters. He was pretty effective at killing the arbalisters. I'll give him that. And he did a shit ton of damage against the footmen in the in the in the night. It's just. Like, there's better... Like, I could already kill the the Arbalisters. I could already... That's the real core issue of this of this build. Is I, he, he doesn't do anything new. I can already do everything he's going to do with other bros. Like, kill Necromancers. I, ha I have a build designed to kill Necromancers. To kill Priests. Um, Ancient Undead fights, once you get really good dudes, can end in about four rounds. The Priest is more annoying... And he really is like a, a thing that needs to die. Um, Arbalisters used ranged units. Like just like it's not that hard to kill an Arbalister. My crossbowmen do it all the time. They did it in that in that very fight. You can watch it in the 52 noble fight. Uh, that I killed them all. I killed the Arbalisters with my crossbowmen. Goblins? Yeah, it takes a while to kill the goblins, but you can still get it done. There's and then and same things with like chosen with the the regular the footman and the billman. And the, the orc, or, the orc warriors. That's what I didn't picture. And like, there's better builds. There's better builds than the fencer, which is sad because that just keeps the fencer in this like, it's really quirky and cool, but it's not really like, it is nothing special. It's it's fun and it's like really cool to watch it work. And it does work. It's not bad. It's just there's better things out there. It's like the same, it's an opportunity cost. What are you not bringing when you bring the fencer? You're not bringing a two-hander. You're not bringing a, a real duelist as opposed to a fencing sword duelist. I'm not bringing this dude. I'm not bringing a polearm. I got like my, one of my polearm crossbow hybrids. I love those guys. Those guys do more for me than like the, the fencer does. The fencer is similar to this flail axe guy. Um, They're great against human enemies and they're kind of a meme, but they're not like, super great about against like the really hard fights the really hard fights are what i love in this game the the super like the big enemies the the massive numbers over like i'm overrun you know i gotta work work my ass off to win and i would never bring this dude and i would never bring the fencer to those fights because the fencer just doesn't he doesn't survive and it's not his environment getting surrounded isn't the fencer's environment the fencer's environment is surrounding other people so in those really hard fights i'm not bringing the fencer which really limits the utility he's in. Like, oh, like I see 15 brigands on the road and I'll bring a fencer. But like, okay, I can win that fight in two rounds or I'm not going to take it because it's boring. So as much as I hate to say it and no hate and like, you know, all the love to people who like fencers, but it's a, it's a novelty build. It's okay. It's okay to like fun, but it's not very good. So what I recommend building a fencer Yes. Build a fencer. Have fun with it. Find find ways to make it good. Because you can. You can make it good. Um, do you need to start a new campaign and be like, oh my god, this is the fencer campaign. I'm going to make four fencers. No. I would never make more than one fencer. I'd either make one fencer or I'd make 12 fencers for the meme. That's it. It's a meme. It's like a meme build. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. I hope you can take from it what you will. And not hate on me because I don't find I find fun in a different way than some other people do. 
There's no hate on anyone who loves fencers. It's just, I don't think it's very viable in the hard fights in the game. And that's what I look for enjoyment, look to for enjoyment, is those really hard fights. I'll see you guys around.